Welcome to the Cherry Picker, the horror movie podcast where we like to kill people, but not really. I'm your host, Zach Cherry, and with me as always is... Yes, I read you. The answer is negative. Eddie of Edward is Truth. And today we're talking about Alien, released May 25th, 1979. Oh my god. I know, right? Well, there's a, there's the new one coming out. Uh, I believe it's, what, August? Sure. Yeah. I'm yeah. just going to take them when they come. I don't I don't keep track. <laughs> this is the well, don't this even, is going to so be the, the loop. seventh one. I I it's hard to to know cuz like what is like Prometheus <sighs> is is like officially yeah. part of the the alien. A, yeah, as is Covenant. Covenant. But that yeah. one's actually has alien in the title. And then this is Alien yeah. Romulus which has nothing to do with those as far as I know, and it, I know, I heard that like timeline wise, it takes place between one and two. What? I, oh well, yeah. I mean, there's a time jump. I mean, she's. That's the th- that's the thing. There's yeah the the uh, what do they call it like cryo stasis? I'm sure there's yeah, like some... one of those things. Sure, <clears throat> but well, what what what's interesting that's going to happen there? I mean, maybe something, but I don't yeah. know. And who's doing it? Who's doing so it? It's, who's doing it's, it? It's Fede Alvarez who. Oh, has, I like him. Yeah, Evil Dead, 2013. Yeah. Uh, don't breathe. Right. He produced the sequel to that. Don't breathe too. Which I still haven't seen. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not going to say anything. That's what but... I heard. Yeah, that's what I heard. <laughs> was I st- I've heard. only seen the first one once, though, so I that's one that I have to revisit. Uh, but I re- okay. remember really liking it. And then he also produced the the, the Texas Chainsaw, uh, oh, whatever it the was Netflix called. one, yeah, twenty twenty two. Texas Chainsaw yeah. Massacre is the official well, title. We, can't, we won't fault him for that. He just produced it. But that's it. You know, <laughs> you producers. You know, your name is attached to something. It's. You're, you only have so much control. You are not in the editing room. You, you know. Some of them have a lot yeah. of control. Uh, but anyway, that's true. He's but I doubt he did. he's directing this one, and uh, okay. yeah, okay. I'm I'm interested to to see it. But I mean, it's 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 been a long time coming getting to this this franchise. But before we even like get into any of that shit, you know, what's going on? How are you? Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's hot. I won't bother you with temperatures because we have a uh, we get lost in translation between the two of us because well, it's not even it's kind of like the metric system, but with degrees. Yeah, does it still apply? I, I guess. I guess so. Yeah. Yeah, because because center uh, is Fahrenheit versus centigrade. We're all Fahrenheit, and you're Celsius. all centigrade. So. Yeah, anytime or Celsius, that thing. Yeah. What is centigrade then? What am I? I, I see, don't I, can't, know. I don't even know. I'm lost. That's how I am. I'm lost. I am one lost ass. It's just mofo. How it's about just you? funny that <laughs> the United States of America is like the only country, really, uh-huh. as, like, as far as I know, that like follows this this system, and everyone else is like, we're just doing this. You guys got to be the rebel. Um, as far as I know, it was our thumbing our noses, and I say us. I mean, I don't mean me. Your forefathers. I, mean, I yeah. guess the yeah, the forefathers thumbing their noses back at you know uh, jolly old England for like yeah, we're gonna make the, our own shit. The and, queen. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And it's like, and uh, no one. It's not taken off with any other country, as far as I know, either. So <laughs> it's like, well, who are we really? Who is this really for? You know, it's. It, oh, I think it's. Just it's it's a it's a spite I, uh, it's a spite thing. You know, it totally <laughs> which kind of makes maybe me that's where it all stems. Yeah, from. which kind of makes me <laughs> like respect it in in a in a way, <laughs> like that uh, being it, that committed to 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 being petty. Yeah, but um, I have to live inside the dysfunctional house though, so I I, I just, I'm just reeling. I'm just reeling every day. But we won't get into that. I oh, you, Zach. well, it's great. Well, you're talking about hot weather. It there's like a torrential downpour just like 30 minutes yeah. ago and i i hope i mean i this is the thing i fucking love this kind of weather but to i'm on the top floor here if it starts up again it's just going to disrupt the podcast and i just i want to yeah. i want to get through the podcast um cuz we've had a lot of bad luck with it lately the uh <laughs> For like a month, over a month, it was my Wi-Fi, and then we fixed that, and then... We had now your video is pristine. I've never seen you look so clear and, and beautiful. Yeah. Of course, on a day where I did not shave, I have not bathed. I, I can see shirt, every pore, <laughs> <laughs> every, that's, every that's... gristle. 
yeah. life in high def. I, I, I was born too soon and started too late. Yeah. <laughs> or is that, I don't know, that's a gypsy quote. I don't know if it applies here. Yeah. I yeah. just like saying it. But uh, yeah, other than that, uh, we've got the macabre campaign that's coming to Kickstarter yeah! next week. Hopefully, we, hey. you know, you never know because we record these in advance and there's always shit always <laughs> happens, it feels. So if, if you're hearing this right now, hopefully everything's good. And, you know, I've, I've, yeah. I've, I've, I, the the social media is up and you can go find that macabre, the movie, all one word on Instagram, mm. Twitter. Uh what's the other one facebook but uh but yeah um i uh, uh before we get into it i i do want to shout out all of my patreon supporters okay. who who support me and support this podcast uh mm -hmm. so they're the reason that we that we keep doing this but uh to my michael myers supporters thank you to kyle beard sam levy ali hamush tim mack k it's Stephanie Starbright, Horror Slut 95, Bruce the Genetic, Jack Hammer Rando. Yeah. Gary <laughs> Vlasic, Josh Carr, Michael Boswell, Brandy Beebe, and Ghost Faces, Eric Champney, Daniel Saturn, Baby Ghoul, and Garrison Nichols. So thank you very much. <laughs> To, to all of the Patreon supporters, uh, if you would like to support the podcast in any way, you can head over to my Patreon. You do get early access to all of the episodes. You'll also get access to the Cherry Picker After Dark. This month we are doing Drop Dead Gorgeous, which is, which yeah. is a good time. Yeah, I'm very excited for that. It's the 25th anniversary. And... Uh, other than that, a uh, big thank you to Jason Voorhees Galatello, the cherry picker editor. Yay! Uh, so you got a premise for for what, what's this movie that we're doing? Oh, I'm going to tell you. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Here we go. When the crew of a commercial towing spacecraft investigates a mysterious transmission of unknown origin. An unidentifiable life form makes its presence a clear threat as one team member after another succumbs to abduction or death. Will the survivors of this group ever overcome their differences and cooperate long enough to defeat this alien Ugh. will they yeah. will they i don't think that they get much sure. done as a team but uh where no, but, uh, is, is this is this streaming on any of the the big ones Actually, it's streamable with a, an active Hulu subscription or a Disney Plus in some territories. It's also for individual rental on the usual platforms like Apple TV Plus, Prime, and the alleged director's cut is advertising on YouTube, but it has a runtime of a minute shorter than the theatrical cut. So I don't, you explain it to me. Oh, I, I have no idea. No, I didn't even look at that. Cause I'm, and it's available. Like it's, it's one of those things that's widely, you know, you can find any of the alien movies sure. on, on physical media and box sets. Like yeah, yeah. I, I've got the, I've got the set and I believe it has the six movies in it. Cause there's also like the alien versus predators, which I don't think is part of that. Of course. That no, canon. but not. no, I think, the, I think the one I have has up until, you have the alien anthology at least or at least like it has the first four that's how little i've been paying attention <laughs> <laughs> the six disc one was released in 2010 it's a blu-ray set it has two cuts of each of the initial four movies that's six discs, yeah that's not the one i have total. this is because this is oh, okay much this newer. is a different yeah. one because covenant oh, okay. came out in what 2017 if you have Covenant, then I don't. I didn't, haven't even clocked. I'm that pretty sure I so have. Good Covenant. for you. Yeah. The most recent one for this film, though, uh, it's available in 4K. It was a 40th anniversary edition that was released in 2019. It mm. has both cuts of the movie. It includes a 4K or a 2160p and a Blu-ray 1080p. Has some special features. It has two commentary tracks, <clears throat> two isolated score tracks, and one of them features Jerry Goldsmith's original intended themes before they were significantly edited for the theatrical release. So that's a perk. Is is Jerry Goldsmith the composer? 
they didn't replace it. Okay. No, they didn't replace him. It's just they significantly altered the tracks mm. from his initial. It, 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 I mean, and I still think they play beautifully, but. What's what I love about an isolated score track is yeah. you get the movie playing with, without it much synchronicity. They just kind of put it where it makes most sense, but you know it starts kind of wherever you just listen to it. The it thing doesn't is, always sync up. yeah, like that was one of the things that I was thinking. I was just like, I didn't really pick up a score. Like it was very oh, understated. Okay. Like there'd be moments where I'm just like, okay, I can like totally hear it, but for the most part, like there's just like. It's, you know, when I compare it to something like The Thing, where you get that boom, 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 you know, like it's, oh, sure. it's very much like present and, and you can feel it. So I don't, this is a movie and, you know, we've talked about Jerry Goldsmith a lot, but I mean, this is not yes, one that I ever, you know, when you think about like great movie scores, I'm never like, oh, Alien, you know? No, but it, it certainly does like all the lovely little kind of like, huh, huh, huh. Uh, you know mm-hmm. that floats in the air it creates this kind of air of mystery and remoteness and um like a like a light springy wonderment that i think it, yeah. it's funny because I, I as a kid i remember i always thought that these characters were scientists because you know people in space in, in, encountering an alien life form they usually are mm-hmm. and even the wonder in the mm-hmm. score kind of like fed that i think in my subconscious and then it wasn't until i think i was a teenager when i stopped being scared of the movie and watched in its entirety that i realized oh they're just blue collar fuckers you know they're, they're just, just space they're just truckers people. yeah yeah they're towers well, they're like tri- the triple a intergalactic triple a well there's this, <laughs> the the scientist on board there's one yeah. scientist that is yeah, not not yeah. spoilers that is not a human. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's a that's the thing. It's just like, you know, usually with these movies, like even the thing, there's it's just like a collection of like mechanics and engineers and geologists right. and and scientists mm-hmm. like of of different calibers. So there's there's a mixed bag here and yeah and these guys feel like truckers. They're just kind of like yeah. shooting the shit at the table and just like <laughs> just just wrestling with with each other and, and and all that so yeah you can definitely feel that that blue collar energy like especially from from siggy weaves so I like to call her. Siggy <laughs> Weaves. Oh my God, that's is adorable. This... When she calls you, you just hey Siggy. Siggy, Siggy Weaves. Weaves. Yeah. What are? Yeah. What are? <laughs> why is that not a thing? <laughs> are you are you Zachy Chairs? <laughs> I've, I haven't gotten that before, but I've I never be I've Zachy never Chairs. heard the name Sigourney before, other than Sigourney Weaver. Or since she's the only Sigourney still uh, yeah. that is in my. Yeah, that's on my Sigourney, mind. like when you think of like names in the future, um, like do you remember in Jason X how like everyone had like really weird names and shit. Like that's barely. Yeah, no, no, no. One, we're getting through the Friday the Thirteenth, but there, um, it's Sigourney. It's just like nobody else has that name. She's, no. it's like she just transported. Her parents like visited the future, and they're like, "Oh, I really like that name." Now we're going back thousands of years and we're going to name our daughter Sigourney. She's, <laughs> she's got, she's, she's got famous parents, right? She's sort of uh, I don't want to use the term Nepo baby, but didn't, I don't remember. I, don't remember. I honestly don't have that much insight to her background. I've never, I've always yeah. accepted and loved her every time I've seen her, but you know what? I, she doesn't interview very often either. I don't remember. I'm trying to remember <laughs> She did like a cameo as Ripley on the Stephen Colbert show, but I don't remember if she stuck around and actually shot the shit with him. I don't. I don't have that much exposure to her, like as a person, like speaking. I don't think from she. The hip. She doesn't have to. She's Sigourney fucking Weaver. No, she doesn't. Have to. She's just like of I don't course. do interviews. Um, yeah, but it and just makes me realize how little insight I have to her, like her life and her training and all that. Oh, I wonder what like, her zodiac sign is. <laughs> I mean, I know that she. I mean, I know that she was a theater actress too. Like, she has a lot of theatrical credits to her name, which is why I think she's good in pretty much everything that she does, and she can nail highly emotionally wrenching stuff and highly comedic stuff and anything that vacillates in between. Like, she's always. I, I even remember seeing her in this movie uh, that was released, I think, around twenty ten. Uh, a monster calls where she played a grandmother and she was English. She had one of the worst English accents I've heard since Dick Van Dyke and Mary Poppins. And I still adored 
what she was doing on screen. She did everything that character needed to be, and she's just an, like an effortless superhero for me. And even even if something isn't quite like clicking along, I'll still just be like, I love you. And anybody who says any different, I will fight in the streets. Sigourney, Siggy Weaves, Sigourney, Sigourney, Sigourney. Um, <laughs> Libra. Uh, by the way, okay. but I was just I was uh, I'm just looking at her filmography because I was just like, is this kind of like the the first her first role at least like where she kind of this was her break for, yeah this is what she put was her on everybody's radar she yeah. was in annie hall in 1977 playing alvy's date outside theater so i sure. don't know what that is a lot but, of new york mm-hmm. actors in uh, movies of woody allen's yeah uh, 70s era and yeah, so she yeah. yeah and the thing is um is is ripley kind of the first big like female action star because I was trying to think, and I can't, I can't remember anyone before that. I mean, if you don't count, and I certainly would count, like, um, uh, like Foxy Brown and Coffee, and you know, oh right, like oh that. Pam Greer, I, I, yeah, yeah. 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 I, I don't think there was necessarily any real white equivalents <laughs> to that. So I mean, it was, it was so specifically you know, uh, owned by that particular demographic. I'm trying to think if there was anybody who, I, I mean, still, I mean, we bring it up often when we discuss like Final Girl Energy mm-hmm. in the movies that we talk about and talk, go like, this is post Ripley and look at the mistakes they're making. Look at how, <laughs> <laughs> how disconnected this character is or how yeah. little we know about them or how little we care <laughs> about like, you know, the way they conduct themselves. I know she wasn't written originally as uh, a woman's role either. It just, she happened to be the one who auditioned that Ridley Scott responded to the most favorably and thought would be the most interesting playing that role. All of the roles were, from my understanding, never engendered yeah. and just had actors uh, uh, of any kind of gender, like, you know, uh, filing in, auditioning. Yeah. And he picked the ones that he thought did the, were the most interesting and did the best job. Fun yeah. fact, in Aliens... That when at the beginning of the movie, when they're doing like the report and all of like the deceased crew members are like showing their, oh, their files on the screen, it actually uh, reveals that Lambert is transgendered. Did oh, I you forgot know? about that. Yeah. I, I, I see. This is the thing. I hadn't seen this movie in probably, I'd say at least 10 years. Um, and I've seen it often, like often enough that like, you know, I'm rarely surprised by story beats, but little details because so much of this movie is about the presentation, the unfolding, you know, mm-hmm. of things, the kind of, a, and really about riding the wave of the tension that they establish. Like that's what this movie has for it. Yeah. It's spades as, as far as I'm concerned. It's just the ability to create suspense and sustain it. And I, so yeah. I don't watch it often because I don't want to get used <laughs> to it ever. So I haven't seen the original uh, quadrilogy in particular yeah. uh, in over a decade. And yeah, whenever we cover Aliens, I'll probably be visiting that for the first time in over a yeah. decade as well. And yeah, it's, yeah. Th- 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 and I mean, I have a similar like position as, of you of just, I don't watch this very often. I don't think that yeah. that's what it is. I just don't know that it's oh. like, it's not, it's not that it's not in my wheelhouse. Like I love sci-fi, but yeah. I don't I, I mean, this to me is a four star movie. Um, like I know, Ooh, like you know, yeah. there are people who are just like this is you know a perfect film and and everything. And I think that, and I agree with you, like the presentation. I think that like the art direction here is incredible. Yes. Like just like just for everything, there's always something on screen that is just so incredible to look at. The lighting, mm-hmm. the atmosphere that is that is created here. I just find the pacing to to kill it for me. Um, Like it really, it's like, there's a lot of movies that I, that I love dearly, like the shining that it's just like a a slow burn all the way through. But it's, it's kind of like things like that are, are peppered with really interesting character moments that just like, it's just like so much nuance between like relationships and stuff. And not, not that that isn't on display here because there are moments like that. And those are probably my favorite parts of the movie in Alien. Yeah. But I feel like so much of this is procedural and just sort of like things happening. And it's just like, all right, we're, we're doing stuff. And it's, it's now we're doing more stuff. And now, oh, this came up and we have to do stuff. And there are scenes where just like all like something happens like the big set pieces where i like really lean in and i'm like oh we're in it now 
and then the scene ends and then it's just like wah like way down like it just everything <laughs> drops and it's just like <sighs> okay now we're now we've hit a, a speed bump and oh, it just okay. it, it for for me it feels like that uh, a, a lot of the way through, and I know that there's like a debate. I mean, it's the it's the immortal Scream Two classroom yes. debate. It's just like which 100%. is better, Alien or Aliens? Uh-huh. And I mean, right. I, if memory serves, I've always liked Aliens more. Like it's more of an action okay. movie. But yes, again, I, yes. I haven't seen it in in as long as I've seen Aliens. So I mean, we'll have to get to that, and I'll I'll have my updated opinion on it because it just seems like that might be a lot of like just like mindless action and stuff but i think i I would argue it's never mindless but go on go on okay well yeah yeah i i don't know but we'll we'll have to see because i think that for what i'm criticizing this which is not even like really criticizing it's just like it's just it's a little too it's a little too inconsistent i feel like would make up for it with like just a little bit more going on and obviously there's like the relationships in those movies uh, in, in the sequel uh, are developed so much more here. What I like is more so just like the quieter moments of uh, like one scene in particular after um, they, you know, they've come back and uh, what's his face it has the hugger on and, and Ripley's yeah. like, no, this is quarantine. We can't let you in yada, yada, yada. Yeah. And then uh, all, See, this is this is the thing. I don't remember most of the characters' names. I Kane. Kane. Kane is the one with the face. Kane hugger, is yeah. the face hugger. Who's the 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 robot? Captain. Oh, the robot is um, Ash. Ash. Yeah. Uh, Dallas is 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 the captain. Lambert the captain. is yes. um, uh, Veronica, uh, Veronica Cartwright. Cartwright. Parker is Yafit Koto. Uh, yes. What's the other guy's name? Um, uh, uh, Harry Dean Stanton. He plays Brett. I know the actor's name, but I didn't know. I see. I did, Brett, and I was like, yeah. and I and I, I'm, I'm gonna like, be jumping to the thing a lot because the thing is like my go-to sci-fi sure. horror, and there's yeah. there's almost twice as many characters in that movie. We talked about that. There's mm-hmm. twelve men that were that are in that movie, and I remember every single one of their names. I remember their personalities. <laughs> and here we're dealing yeah. with like just a little over half of them. And I'm just like, they're not that they're like like stock characters or anything. Like they, they all have like personalities that come yeah. through, but I just feel like we're not really integrated into like who they are very much other than like uh here's here's the job where at least like in something like the thing where like paranoia is is such an underlying theme that you really get to explore uh-huh. who these people are as characters through that and here it's just sort of like i, th- I think they're the driving force is like money and like we you know and and what's in our contract and and things like that but there's um Okay. Sorry, the 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 one moment that I really liked, which is a lot of the stuff with uh, between Ripley and Ash, after mm. she's she's the one who's you know following protocol and just being smart and being like, no, we can't lo- allow you yes. in. He goes and he opens the door anyway, and there's just sort of this like unspoken thing, like it goes on for a while, and then like maybe mm-hmm. 15 minutes later or something, she kind of comes in and they're just like having this conversation he's like did you need something and she's like yeah and she kind of you know reprimands him in like the the best way that she can in terms of like you know when i'm on this ship and dallas and i guess is kane second in command or whoever like i'm Mm -hmm. i'm in charge like you have to you have to listen to me and it's just sort of like it's just like you can feel the tension you feel like i don't trust this person i you know like it's just like stuff like that that's what i love and then, mm-hmm. and then her, you know, going to Dallas and you know discussing that afterwards. Um, right. That there's, those are the those are the moments that I really live for. That's where like I really get to like access the characters and 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 find out who they are. And Sigourney Weaver for like probably the first half of the movie is not very present. Like not that she's not present, but like you wouldn't watch this unless you like had the foresight to know like she's the star or whatever that this is like right. her movie because she's not top build it's it's tom scarrett yeah yeah i mean that was one thing it's funny that you brought up uh the thing because that occurred to me too not just because i looked at tom scarrett and thought like because i've seen him in so many other movies and i'm just kind of like oh 
He's giving the closest to uh, like McMurphy that I've ever McCready. seen. McCready. McCready. Sorry, McMurphy <laughs> is is uh, one flew over the cuckoo's nest. My brain is barely functioning, folks. I'm very tired. Sorry about it. The heat. I'm not kidding about the heat. Yeah. Anyway, uh, McCready. Um, <laughs> but I thought like he's giving like the most Kurt Russell I've ever seen him because he's just kind of like this shaggy leading man, you know. And he's <laughs> the fact that he. Um, that he is first build, I feel is like a great kind of, uh, I don't know if it's a red herring, but just like a seed planted in our heads, uh, thinking like, even the way he's set up, because he's not the greatest leader, he's really kind of like seems to be just bent on getting through it, getting it over with, you know, just like, I just don't want to be hassled. St at Ripley, would you just give it a rest? And everybody else, would you just do what I tell you to kind of thing? That energy very much in that bent. Mm -hmm. So if there were to be an arc for that character, if he were to be our final boy, as it were, mm -hmm. then the arc, I could see where that arc would land is finally he ends up uh, stepping up, you know, like, and actually does maybe manage to protect somebody or manages to lose everybody and realize mm -hmm. that his, you know, laissez-faire attitude dev or devil-may-care attitude, rather, is, you know, kind of what made his entire team suffer. It was all, you know, within his control. And now he has to do right by, you know, extinguishing this, this life form or, you know, whatever, stopping it from yeah. making any more uh, 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 leeway. So, I mean... I appreciate it for that. And that's another thing. See, for me, having seen this movie as often as I do, it's still, um, I guess I like it more than you do because I would give it five stars. I don't think it's perfect, though. But even with its imperfections, four and a half. my willingness to surrender them, my willingness to just kind of look past them. Um, and I know what they are. I can even point them out. But my willingness to look past them is... Um, is also kind of like clues me into like how do I regard this film? Also, I, I mean, this is the thing: the Ridley Scott slow burn. I'm all about. I've seen people do movie reactions to Ridley Scott films before, like uh, Legend or Blade Runner and things like that, and they'll always go kind of like, I mean, artistically, it's really you know they basically echo like what you were saying, like artistically mm -hmm. gorgeous, behold, and everything like that. Not much story though, and I the thing is, I guess from an early age, Legend, Legend I think <clears throat> was the first one that I that I glommed onto. And I just remember thinking he created a world for me, he and his team. And every time I turned on the movie, it didn't feel like I was watching a movie. It felt like I was just moving through a world. He's kind of like the, one of my favorite directors who allows you to piggyback on characters who are who don't, we don't spend a lot of time yeah. defining what their characteristics are. But by the end of the movie, you do feel as though they're friends or at least people you know really well. Yeah. And I think I get that. Well, I don't get... Um, uh, like you were saying with the thing, the kind of, uh, I don't know, the maybe the, 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 the stigma <laughs> of, the, uh, of the confrontations that they have repeated, repeatedly throughout that movie. It is kind of like on a, on, a, on a lower flame in this movie. But one thing that I like is um, just, uh, like I said, just kind of meandering. And I don't use that term. Uh, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, uh, da, da, da. Uh, in a bad way. I yeah. mean, <laughs> derogatorily, that's what I was looking yeah. for. But I mean it like, uh, in, 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 as though like, you spend enough time kind of feeling as though you're just drifting through something that you, there's this illusion of uh, a, a, a lack of need for control. You just, you can just kind of surrender to it and just give over to the ride. And then before you know it, you're on a ride you don't want to be on anymore. We got, at, at one point, I don't remember exactly when it was um i think it was right before brit starts looking for jonesy and i didn't want him to go look for jonesy <laughs> because i know what's coming and i didn't want them to leave him alone because just because that you shift your you know uh your, your objective from let's find this thing to uh oh jonesy got away let's go find jonesy doesn't mean you still can't encounter that thing <laughs> so they just kind of drop the guard like okay we're not looking for that anymore we'll wait until we get jonesy yeah. safe and then we'll start looking I for mean, it again to be <laughs> to be fair at that point yeah. what they were looking for was this tiny little wormy creature so it hadn't shed its skin yet that's true. Uh, because that's, the, that's the, true. the discovery that he made so i mean e even still like they're like they know what this it's capable of they've seen what it's done mm -hmm. to to their cohort 
Um, so I do agree with you. It kind of felt like, you know, are, are you guys taking it seriously or, or not? It, it almost felt like it, it felt very forced for him to go off on his own and uh, and, and look, for the, look for the cat. And also, <laughs> like, what is with this fucking cat? <laughs> like, Jonesy! Jonesy, I know, but it's like, what? Why are they not like? Why do they not have a better handle on things? And whose cat is it? Is it is it hers? <laughs> it's it's Ellen's, yeah. Okay. It's Ripley's. Yeah. Okay. Because I didn't. Because when they when we we um, are, you know, everyone wakes up at first and the things are open. I would imagine that the cat would be in there with her because like we see her put it in the in the bed at the end and we see it at the beginning of Aliens mm-hmm. on top of her. But we don't see yeah. like I guess like the. The females are on the other side, so we only see, like, uh, you know, Kane and Parker and whoever's, mm-hmm. like, on that side of the thing. Uh, but they're presumably all there, so I just didn't see where's Jonesy. And I don't remember the first time we see Jonesy. I feel like it's after they already get the transmission and they've landed on the, the planet. And then she's kind of, uh, she might be, like, having coffee or something and just, like, waiting on the bridge. And then the cat's uh-huh. just there, That you know. That might have been the first time we see it, but I was just like, that might have been. yeah. So I always wonder, like, who's who's whose cat is it, or or if it was a thing where it was like the ship cat, and she just kind of took ownership of of him after everyone else was dead. I mean, that's what. See, the funny thing is, like, that there's something about Jonesy that I really came to appreciate. This, I think I appreciate it every time I see the movie. But you know, I'm taking notes, so mm-hmm. I'm going to write stuff. And I just wrote. Ripley's rigidity is never rooted in a blind adherence to the rules. It's always in the preservation of life. And that's as much present in her, you know, need to quarantine and then to, you know, try and protect the last three (laughs) remaining um, shipmates who have not disappeared or died when she's stuck with. And they couldn't have picked. That's another thing that I appreciated was they couldn't have picked like the three kind of like most uh disrespectful <laughs> members of her team because we've already established that um that ash doesn't listen doesn't give a shit what she says and even when she is technically in command he doesn't see it that way mm-hmm. and he's going to do whatever he needs to for the ultimate mission you know yeah. and then we've got um uh 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 uh, uh lambert and I always just want to call her Veronica Cartwright. Uh, but <laughs> we got Lambert, who obviously there's no love lost between those two, particularly from Lambert. I don't. I got the impression when I was watching this movie in particular, th- this particular screening, I was like, does she like anybody? And I felt like the only one she really liked 100% of the time was uh, John Hurt's role, Kane. Because she, when, she seemed to genuinely give a shit about what happened to him, not just when they were trying to get him aboard the ship, but once he was on the ship, she was standing there just looking on while, you know, Ash is taking care of shit. And, you know, she was also the one that was like, you know, when when Dallas's uh, signal was lost when he went into the air ducts, like she was the one that was kind of like the most reactionary about it. Yeah, she did like then. But but before then, she had a moment where she was like, uh, where Dallas is like asking her stuff. There was one point where she's just going down the list of like things that she's covered. It's like, well, what about this? She's like, <sighs> and just <laughs> rolling her eyes and everything. I think she cared ultimately, like, you know, like, yeah. it, of course she did. But prior to that, the only one I didn't see her have a problem with or roll her eyes yeah. at at any point on screen was um, uh, John Hurt's role, Kane. Well, I mean, so, she did just, yeah. she did full on deck Ripley when. She came into the, I guess, like the little uh, gallery area or whatever to, to look over the medical so, bay uh, because so of she the... She did that in your cut? I... <laughs> I don't... I, I know that that scene happens, but now I'm just it like, does. does it... It's not okay. in the theatrical cut. Okay, now It I'm... was put into the extended version, yeah. Oh, damn. It was... I, I, but but it no, I it... like that moment. I guess, you know... Like, I do too. Yeah. It was memorable. I was looking for it. I was watching the because I don't I haven't watched the theatrical cut in ages, yeah. and I streamed it this time. And I was like, "What? I know that happens." And then mm-hmm. I went back. I watched deleted scenes and found it. Yeah. In you know the recovered footage and stuff. So she yeah. she gives like such good like manic energy, mm-hmm. <laughs> like in everything that I've seen her in, or just like at least like horror, like just the like like I when when she gets to those points. It fe- like it just seems realistic. Like she's the person that's like in the crew, just like, oh my god, shut up. 
<laughs> and uh, like yeah. you got like just yeah. just just relax. And um, what was it? it's in uh, Invasion of the Body Snatchers because she's the one at the end where she's just like walks over and and like Wah! and she's just like Wah! like yeah yeah, yeah 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 <laughs> and it has always been that way. She was the little girl in the birds who runs oh. in after the the schoolyard thing. She goes, the birds are everywhere. And, she, you know, like, she pushed me in first. She pushed me in first. <laughs> And, of course, I think my favorite role I've ever seen her in is in uh, Witches of Eastwick, where she's suffering at the hands of the devil, you know, right. being essentially possessed by him and, and damaged by him until finally the infamous cherry scene, which, you know, one day we'll talk about yeah. that, hopefully. But, um, <laughs> yeah, she's, she's got... <laughs> she yeah. is a raw nerve actress. If you need somebody to have a breakdown, yeah. get Veronica she was, Cartwright. She's she was also us, so. in the uh, the sequel to Candyman, the first sequel. Right. Yeah, yeah I remember that. Yeah. Farewell to the Flesh. Yeah. Uh, is she, is she still her. working regularly? Okay. I don't know about working regularly. I mean, uh, she was just on a, a podcast with Eric McCormick and uh, Sean Hayes. Uh, a little re- Will and Grace retrospective because she played Jack's mom in one episode oh, okay. and talked to them about her appearance in it and everything like that. And so, I, yeah, um, she had just done something. I don't know. I don't know what. I didn't look her up or anything. But as far as I know, she she's yet to retire. So good for her. Yeah. Make, make those checks. Mm-hmm. Out. You uh, <laughs> so you mentioned like sort of like uh, Ridley Scott's world building that he does in yeah. the, his movies. And it made me think of uh, a movie that we covered a few months ago with Hannibal cuz that is a, that is a Ridley Scott movie and i just think that it's 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 interesting that you mentioned that because it's it's almost like he took any regard for like the the world that had been created by Jonathan Demme Demi, Dem, mm-hmm. Demi, 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 and just like threw it out the window, and it's just like, no, this is the this is the world of Hannibal now. And, of course, one hundred percent. And it just, yeah, I mean, I guess like kudos to 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 taking the the liberties there, but I mean, I yeah. I don't think that it always pays off for him. No, and I don't even remember if I said this in the Hannibal pod, but I do remember thinking, and I thought it this time too. Uh, when Ridley Scott nails it for me, he really nails it. And when he misses the mark, my God, does he ever yeah. miss the mark? This one is is uh, one of the the pluses in, uh, in yeah, my, absolutely. my column for yeah. him. Yeah, but um, I I think my regard for it because you you uh, uh, t- said you know you probably probably mm-hmm. I, and I think you will pr- uh, still uh, prefer. Uh, aliens to alien whenever just, we just finally just cover based it. on like where I usually lean towards. Yeah, in, in our, I mean uh, uh, because your usual issues. I think you'll. I, I I I'm wondering what your issues would be with aliens on a revisit. Like I'd be. I'm really interested to have that conversation with you too. But mm-hmm. my the thing is, I think I lean in a little bit more in this direction. Um, most of the time, I, a lot of conversations that I have, it's interesting because a lot of people, it's about where Ripley is and how she is affected by the environment around her and how she affects the environment around her. And most of the time, what I hear from people when they prefer aliens, aside from it being, you know, more rapidly paced and full throttle and everything. And also, I mean, the, I love that movie. Um, the climax is incredible mm-hmm. and everything building up to it is perfectly set up, I think. But the thing is, it's, and I know it's, ref- I've shared this with other viewers who favor it. It's so refreshing to see Ripley in a position of power where there are actually people listening to her, mm-hmm. you know, where she actually knows exactly what the threat is and yeah. how they're going to move forward and everything. And at the same time, avoid being a Mary Sue at all costs yeah. before that term even existed. She's... She wasn't it. She was never it. Yeah. To, to, but, to, to, yeah. to, to draw another Scream 2 parallel, she was the Cassandra of, of Alien. <laughs> <laughs> Well, because the reason I love seeing her in Alien is because I, uh, well, well, it's frustrating for me to see her surrounded by people who will not listen to her. I love the strength it demands of her to exist in that kind of resistance repeatedly. The fact that she stands her ground when no one, even when they're in dire straits and they know they are, when she's with those three people who have disrespected her up until now. Mm -hmm. Um, 
they all have to listen to her now. And I, oh God, that's one of my favorite moments is when she's sitting there talking to um, Parker and he's just going off and she's just kind of like, Parker, would you shut up for a minute? You know, <laughs> and he just starts talking and then he stops. <clears throat> he's like, go on, talk. And she's like, hold, yeah. you know, she's like, I'm not going to, you know, like the energy is very much, I'm not going to talk because you told me I'm going to talk when I'm ready. And he's like, come on, talk. She starts talking. He starts to talk over and she starts to raise her voice. Letting him know I'm still talking. Oh, yeah. fuck. Yeah. Oh, She's so mother happy. now. Uh, She's mother now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad she never said that line in this movie. It would have wrecked everything. Oh, my God. There would be no Ripley. <laughs> <laughs> She'd be a completely different character. But, mm-hmm. <laughs> but yeah, there's something about watching her. Because that's the other thing is, like, um, I actually kind of like the sparing examples we have of them battling against this thing because i never question whether the threat exists and yet they don't interact with it very often even her climactic interaction with it at the end of the movie is not though i love aliens and the climax there i love that this one is very still it's quiet and it's more based in something that is accessible to me as a mortal which is i need to you know bait my breath i need to move smoothly but calmly not too swift not too slow everything is walking a high wire in that climactic confrontation and she doesn't even have to really go toe to toe with it she has to she turns around sees it's right there and it's like fuck this is the moment (laughs) slams the thing the airlock gives and the thing is out there and then it tries to get over near like what what, whatever the propulsion yeah you know the vent thing because that's what it does it crawls through vents and that's when she needs to turn the fucking engine on and it's it's the 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 most sparing use of action beats i I think i've seen in recent years and it still has me rooting for her and also you know holding my breath going okay just be calm just be calm just be calm i am on the ride with her like 100 percent through all of that that's what i prefer do you think that jonesy because like when she took him out of the crate uh was still kind of like a little tense that the cat sensed what was, you know, that the, the alien was in there. I mean, to a point, the cat also ran into the damn room that the that the xenomorph was hanging from them chains yeah. and everything. So I think... It well, we don't know that. that, that so it might have followed Jonesy in there, too. Oh, that's... Uh, I don't know. I mean, in my own experience, I've been a cat owner for a very, very long time. Multiple cats throughout my life. Mm. And I have to say... Sometimes their their keen senses are admirable, and sometimes there's a full on earthquake happening in my house. And I'll look over at Des; she doesn't even flinch from her nap. She's just curled up there in a little ball, and I'm like, "Aren't you supposed to feel it before I do? You've been asleep all morning. What's wrong with you?" So, a little column A, little column B. There's no hard and fast rules about what cats can sense. Mm. But I that was another thing, seeing you know, your, your slasher, as it were, you know, uh, that's what the xenomorph is in this movie. Mm -hmm. Um, In a way, in a way, we'll talk about that in a second too, but just seeing it slumbering, seeing it just kind of like laying there and doing everything but snore, basically like, me, 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 you know, like. (laughs) That would have just been so adorable. (laughs) There's something about seeing like your oppressor, like uh, uh, dormant, that, that uh, it, it, I don't know. It, they don't often get portrayed that way, and I like it. I like that. And also, it wasn't like a, a hack bit where, like, the keys to <laughs> to open the hatch are just past the xenomorph, so she has to tiptoe over him and reach just past it. You know, like, it's not, it's not that. Mm-hmm. It, it's just about keeping your cool and, I don't know. Yeah, it's something that I feel is less tropey. So, I mean, that, that's why I give it you know, too big. No, that's, that, that's but, fair enough. Yeah, but I can acknowledge uh, what's wrong. One thing that got cut that is in the extended version that I don't understand why they ever cut it is um, toward the end when Ripley's got her flamethrower and the countdown has already started. She makes her way down a ladder and finds Dallas um, alive, barely. Yeah. And like all gelled up, kind of the way Newt was in <clears throat> Aliens. He's all gelled up, you know, like and cocooned or whatever, you know, up against uh, the wall. And I think she, I believe she even sees uh, Brett. And 
I couldn't tell because it was a real murky resolution. Couldn't tell if Brett was supposed to be alive or dead or sleeping or what, mm. or if the, the the thing already hatched out of him. I couldn't really make it out. But Tom Skerritt is there as Dallas, and he's just he's saying over and over again, "Kill me, <laughs> kill me." And this is the this is what explains the moment actually later in Aliens when Newt's abducted and she says she's alive they have to keep her alive whereas in the if you just watch the theatrical release of this movie you would assume the alien is just killing them all off yeah. like a slasher would but it's more interesting like, if you see the aftermath in wrong turn <laughs> where they they literally kill all of them and but they they kidnap Eliza Dushku and for whatever reason he goes after her at, at the end just because like yeah she's got to be alive like there's you know for for no yeah. for no given for no reason, reason at all but just because the movie's no. got a movie I mean, I, I would have been interested to see if they had needed a host body to lay their eggs in and she happened to be the next candidate. That would have at least been something. But um, <laughs> but that that I wish would have just been incorporated into the theatrical release because, number one, it, it, it only adds to the tension and, and it only makes everything more interesting. It's it's a terrifying woman and Tom Skerritt plays it yeah. really well. And she does the crying, like, I can't do it. The Almost... Almost Jessica Biel, Texas Chainsaw Massacre in the in the basement <laughs> with the piano moment, you know, but she actually does it and actually does it well. It's not like I'm gonna stab like, you just... in like the worst possible place oh my where it's God, just, where yeah. it's gonna hurt and it's gonna take you a very long time to bleed out and die. <laughs> right. <laughs> and I'm also gonna try I'm gonna deny you. You're telling me to kill you and I'm gonna deny it for a long time and could be convinced I can save you, try to lift you up out of it and only make you fall harder so the hook goes deeper like ripley knew better than that she she wept a little bit just kind of braced herself and then she just torched the fucker and i'm mm -hmm. like good for you get the job done ripley that's mm -hmm. another reason why it should have been included in the movie yeah I agree. um yeah <laughs> <laughs> i also but the, another movie that kept occurring to me while i was it's funny that you bring up the shining earlier because it made me think about um all of the establishing shots of uh, particularly like the moving parts of, or not even, they weren't even necessarily moving parts, but just of the ship as it's like passing over and everything like that. All of these establishing shots, the time it takes for them to actually kind of like dock the ship when they get that mysterious signal and everything like that. There is a lot of time, even in the theatrical cut, spent on them landing on that planet before mm -hmm. they get out to explore. And one of the things I appreciated about that was number one, Kubrick, 2001 Space Odyssey. There's a movie that takes its time and takes a lot of time in space, mm -hmm. just kind of showing you the size, the immensity of, you know, what's what's in oper in operation up there and everything like that. It's like Behold. But what I liked about it here was it also showed me um, how much commitment <laughs> it takes for the entire team to do something they're not all on board with. You know, like, you still, you still are on board. You still have to get on your little microphone and talk to this person and that person and make sure that it's that things are operating the way they need to and everything like that because that's ultimately the call and there was something about that that again gave me the environment in a way just the work environment how fatigued these people must be but at the end of the day they do have to cooperate no matter what the orders are you know mm -hmm. um, and no matter what the book is there there was no one there ultimately saying you do this and you're all going to listen because I'm in charge. Everybody feels like they have the ability to chime in on what the best course of action is. Yeah. Well, there's and a Dallas is not that great a leader. So. Well, no, because like <laughs> that's the thing at the beginning, because it's uh, Parker's the one that's sort of pushing back on that and just being like, yeah, yeah. Uh, like, I don't want to do that. That's not what we signed up for. And it's just like, no, we're obligated to. And if you don't do it, then you don't get paid at all. Um, yeah. so, but then later on when, when they're in the thing and he's got like the steam or whatever going, uh, whenever yeah. Ripley's like trying to talk and she's just like, you know, like legally they have to pay you. So yeah. is that suggesting? Cause I mean, I believe anything she says, <laughs> that's the, th <laughs> that's the thing. So are we, so are we saying that, you know, Ash and Dallas are just like full of shit when they, are you know making these threats to the the team by saying like if you don't uh, follow this protocol then you're going uh -huh. you're not going to get paid for the work that you've done. We already know for a fact that Ash is full of shit and will say anything yeah. to get his mission or his commitment to you know 
the 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 corporation's mission you know uh to to meet that kind of like ultimate uh goal Mm -hmm. um so yeah so i don't trust him as far as i can throw him and as far as dallas i would expect someone like dallas to have only a passing knowledge of the ordinances and the you know (laughs) what the rules are Mm -hmm. i trust ripley more than i trust either one of them um in terms of just like uh what what they're sharing as far as insight into like how you know these this code of conduct and what you can do and what you can't do and what it means and whatever because that was another okay i was wondering while i was watching this in a way that i never did before make it make sense i mean it never makes sense anytime you work for a corporation and you see these bylaws and whatnot that seem to contradict each other and they're just and you ask someone well which is true and they both kind of they all they usually just kind of shrug and go i don't know i guess it depends on what the situation is and what the higher ups you know what decision they make because you've got <laughs> this ship and you get a signal but it's not within your system yet there's something that says if you get some kind of sign of life form and you like uh, uh, according to ash you need to investigate and respond to the signal to find out what it is and if it's somebody who may need help or and everything like that but i'm like if it's not your system is it absolutely impossible to conceive of a notion that an alien life form might be hostile? You know, even if it doesn't have like acidic skin or anything like that. What if it's, they, you know, just fuckers like us? And it's just, how do we know what their intent is? How do we know what they're really sending the signal out for? Mm-hmm. How do we know, you know, it just kind of feel like, well, what's the protocol? Make yeah. it make sense. And it's just, it absolutely does not. Yeah, it's it's a weird thing, especially when you have like, you know, Ripley's whole thing of just like, well, no, we can't let you on the ship because there's this. It kind of, it does contradict the the whole thing of like, well, we have to go follow this, this message that, I mean, it could be anything. There's, you know, a, a more responsible thing would be to track where it is, get right. uh, get a team out that's actually versed in handling situations like 100%. that rather than than yeah. these these truckers so yeah <laughs> i mean they, the, the, the I whole agree. thing i mean i guess as we find out as the the series goes along that this was yeah. like you know planned and uh they were they really were just set up for a loss and you know when they yeah. she reads that message like the crew's expendable it's just like that was it, it was always written in the stars, you know. This was this yeah. was their fate. Um, that was another parallel with the thing that I appreciated too, though, was them kind of like going out there to investigate. Well, what happened? Where did this thing come from? Mm-hmm. You know, and it's 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 a dog and a man. You know, trying to shoot the dog in the thing, and in this, it's a signal that they can't quite make out. They don't know if it's a voice or what, and. But they get to see the aftermath of what happened to someone else who yeah. stepped in the wrong direction. You yeah, know? Well, and I, I, I appreciate that. What so I love so much Carpenter about love this movie. Yeah, what I love yeah. so much about the thing is that you know you talk about like the way that it starts. Like it starts in the middle of the action, and it's it, it leaves this huge question mark of just like why are they trying yeah. to kill the dog? What is that about? And right. it just, everything slowly unravels from there. Just like you're, we're finding out new information. Whereas here, we're not really like, okay, the, so the thing, the transmission comes through, but it's just like, yeah. we can't make heads or tails of it. It has to be explained to us. But, you know, the movie, in order to explain it to us, has to have characters communicate that with each other. So there's a lot of like exposition and nothing's really happening. It's just sort of like, oh, we have to check this out. So I think the first time I watched this when I was like a teenager, you know, because you yeah. don't really, when there's a lot of exposition and stuff, it just kind of goes over your head. So it's just like, okay, stuff is happening. And I mean, I still feel that way about the movie, but it's just like, you know, I have more focus when I can watch mm-hmm. something and just be like, okay, this is this is what's happening and this is here. But I mean, you know, I also saw the thing when I was very young as well, but it's just like intuitively you understand the story and you don't need things explained to you. So there is a level of storytelling that like, you know, regardless of how much focus that you're putting into a movie, because I mean, let's face it, in this day and age, um, focus on on anything that's longer than 30 seconds long is, is very difficult for a lot of us. Sure. So yeah. if a movie can achieve that that level of like connecting and, and you know, uh, uh, having a, an audience access what is being told to you without having to really do the work to tell you that that's a good 
screenplay. That's a good movie. Right, right. And I'm not saying yeah. that Alien is not good because I, like I said, I think that this movie, in terms of the art direction, is is fantastic. Like I, you talk yeah. about those slow moments of just watching the ship dock and things like that. And it's like I'm watching a moving painting, and I can just sit, kind of sit there and and appreciate the the work that went into it. But when it comes to you know, like just the long drawn out, like, okay, and now there's, this is going to happen and this is our thing. And we're just kind of talking, yeah. uh, space jargon, uh, uh -huh. space trucker jargon. Like, I'm just like, sure. come on, let's do better. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, that's, what's interesting is about the script, because there were a lot of things that were cut where I'm just kind of like, yeah, that's extraneous. That never should have been. And I won't bother mentioning what those things are, but there, cause there's, there's quite a bit, like there's a lot of cutting room floor footage that you watch and you're just kind of like, yeah, this never should have been in. Mm -hmm. I'm glad they cut it where they cut it. But like little things like the slap between uh, uh, Lambert and <laughs> and Ripley. Um, that's great. That should have always been in. Mm -hmm. I just mentioned the whole thing with Dallas up against the wall. That should have always been in. There's also another moment. Okay, I can't make up my mind whether this belongs in. You tell me which you prefer okay. because it's after the moment I uh, spoke about where Ripley's sitting there with Ash, Lambert, and um, uh, uh, Parker. And she's just kind of shouted him down, and he leaves to go do what he's going to do. Ash has left, and Ripley's left alone with Lambert. And she goes over, and she just kind of, like, sits across from her. And Lambert's emotional, and Ripley's trying to connect with her now and just say, um, listen, if we all do this together, you know, this, this, this is the only way, but we have to be together. And essentially Lambert is crying, just kind of says, I just feel like you're, you're killing each one of us one at a time, you know, just, <laughs> and then Ripley really genuinely responds to it and just kind of says, listen, if you do this, this plan, you know, like whether it works or not, I promise you, I am going to get you out of here all of you i promise you and and i was like oh my god i don't i i think i kind of like this and then the moment takes a weird turn <laughs> where ripley says i have to ask you something though and lambert's like okay what and she's just like have you ever slept with ash because <laughs> they haven't found out he's a robot yet yeah. and and lambert's kind of like no and she's just kind of like, are you sure? Or something like that. She's just kind of like, yeah, I'm sure. No, to tell you the truth, I don't think <laughs> I he think was I ever really in. Yeah, she's like, no, to tell you the truth, I don't think he was ever really interested. <laughs> and Ripley kind of, there were two different cuts of it. In yeah. one cut, Ripley kind of laughs with her. Like, okay. And then they both kind of walk off nervously. And in another one, they just stay on this master shot of the, or it's not a master, it's a two shot of the two of them. She says, I think he wasn't ever interested. And Ripley just kind of looks at her sympathetically and puts her under her arm and just, they walk off together. And I'm like, what the fuck was that? But um, yeah, thing was. I, mean, I think that yeah. <laughs> every, and yeah. I don't remember this at all. Like I, I remember this, ex <laughs> like the beginning of this exchange the because yeah that absolutely should be there that is a great moment to yeah. that, to kind of inform us who these characters are and what their yeah. relationship is uh with yeah. one another the have you ever slept with ash like that i think there's a way that they could have been more subtle with that and just because you know she we know that she doesn't trust him um, mm -hmm. And there could have there could have been a, like a question that was asked that was more kind of like inferring to that rather than just mm -hmm. to like blatantly been like hey because that's a really <laughs> weird personal question to yeah. to ask and like why why would she be asking that is it like a, does she suspect that he's an android at, at this point um, yeah so yeah that that mm -hmm. could have been th that. Latter half uh, could could have been could have been left out completely. I agree. Yeah, I could have done with that. that. It feels like that's something they put in once they knew both of the roles were going to be played by women. Like that's what I got from it. I'm like that wouldn't have been. I can't see two men. <laughs> I mean, yeah. especially I, again, tonally it's off for two women. But imagine like two men just kind of like so. Uh, 
You ever sleep with Ash? <laughs> <laughs> no, to tell you the truth, I don't think Ash has ever been interested. <laughs> is that, it's, it's almost like no the, what. is that the, the Bechtel test where it's like, it totally yeah. is. It failed the Bechtel yeah, test. Yeah. It's, it's two it deleted scenes. Talking, talking about the, uh, can't go men, for yeah. more than four lines than talking about men. And have you slept with him? Do you like him? Mm-hmm. What do you think he, what do you think he thinks of me? But, um, <laughs> but what I, the thing is, what I liked about, like you said, like the front half of that yeah. was she t- promises there was one i'm of two minds of it because i thought like ripley gets really really emotional after she's lost her crew Mm -hmm. and she's getting ready to set the uh explosion uh the explosives off in you know destroy the ship and be on her way and everything like that she is so emotional and all i could think was one thing that would have fed that emotion is if she would have promised that she was going to protect, you know, all of them and get them off safe. And then she couldn't. She couldn't save them. So I thought, like, a broken promise to Ripley is not something that she would easily recover from. And I might... I don't have a problem seeing her emotional while she's getting ready because she's in dire straits at that point. But I, it would have only made it... I would have been like, oh, hon, just shake it off. You got to shake it off. They, they, you know, they knew what the stakes were. Mm-hmm. And so I think that moment happens a little bit more for me but at the same time i wonder would ripley ever promise anyone anything like that yeah. and i don't know I I, I, I I there's a case to be made for both yeah so i don't really know well, how i feel about going it. going back to that exchange that deleted exchange what's interesting yeah. about that is that the that the moment that comes before that is lambert suggesting the that they draw straws because only three people oh, can, right. yeah can yeah. fit on the uh, escape pad. Well, first she says, why don't we just like leave there? Or Parker might have said that. And then uh, uh, Ripley right. says, well, you know, only three people can fit yeah. on it. And I liked that as well because it's like clearly she would be down for that, but she's got, you know, because old Ash is back there being a little <laughs> snaky snake. Um, yeah. So, you know, I love when like little like details like that come up and they mention it and she's kind yeah. of like, you, you know, that just like, yeah, there's only three of us. And then you have Lambert just like all in hysterics, just being like, well, why don't we draw straws? And I and I would have loved to see a scenario where they're like, okay, let's do that. And then Lambert draws the short straw and like how she would, it's just like, we have oh, to do it over. <laughs> she would just run. No, I think she would just run to the shuttle just to try and beat them. Oh, and would, she, <laughs> would she, not to, not to bring up Jason X again, but the one who tried to escape in the shuttle and ended up crashing it into the ship. Yeah, right. <laughs> that would 100% yeah. be Lambert's uh <laughs> her undoing. Fate. Yeah. Yeah. It's like I'm going to I'm going to fuck myself over and and all of y'all in the process. Yeah. yeah. Um there was one other design element I wanted to acknowledge too cuz talking about Ash being an android and everything like that. One of the things that I noticed um and, and again, like it's kind of hard when you when you've seen particularly the second movie. Sometimes sometimes there's elements of the third and the fourth where I'm just kind of like, oh, yeah, that that's a nice thread throughout, you know, like whatever. But really, the first two movies are, you know, the story that I want to revisit over and over again, right. you know, every few years. Yeah. But um, one of the things, because, you know, uh, maternity is a major theme, like very much at the forefront of the sequel. In this movie, I was just kind of like, it's still kind of there. It's not like James Cameron pulled that out of his ass. It's like... The fact that um, the ship, the HAL of this particular, you know, Nostromo Mm -hmm. is called Mother. And in, you know, under the guise of like something that is there to nurture and to take care uh, of you, to lift you up and, you know, protect you from from harm. It's literally putting them out there on a limb, you know, and and, and, uh, they're completely expendable. They're they're. It, it, it couldn't care less about them. The mission has nothing to do with them. Maybe it didn't have anything to do with towing anything either. The the, the whole key mission was just to find that signal <laughs> over a course of how many years. And they finally found it and they could finally go home, you know, 10 months later. But um, I got something. So I got something from that with like mother and everything thinking like, oh, you know, mother is going to betray you. Um, but I also got... Something from I, it was interlaced with this because I always love the undercarriage of the uh, the face huggers mm-hmm. the, uh, in this movie more than any others because they're organic. They're completely like you know built from oyster parts and fish parts and you know like innards and things like that. That's why That's they gross. look so yeah. 
Yeah, it's <laughs> absolutely gross. And you know me, I love gross. Mm -hmm. So I'm just like, <laughs> I mean, later on, I feel like the eggs themselves get grosser and, and more organic looking because of the folds, the way they open up, they curl down you know when they open up like that and i always feel like ooh, that's a nice touch uh because this one they just kind of go Wah. but anyway <laughs> they just kind of flare out if you're mm -hmm. not watching us my yeah. hand gestures but um the thing i love seeing the undercarriage and i love the organic you know uh material that we're looking at and perceiving as organic material where it else the the other place where it kind of comes up for me uh both of these things mother and you know the organic matter uh come up for me when uh, we find out that Ash is an android and he's beheaded and we see all of the workings, all the gears inside mm -hmm. of him. And there's something about it. I love the fact that they didn't go in the direction. And I don't know if it was Ridley Scott's call or if it was um, H.R. Giger, who we haven't talked about yet and we will. But um, H.R. Giger's call to like, I don't know how much hand he had in the design beyond the xenomorphs and the alien mm -hmm. of it all. Because I could feel like I can see it in the Nostromo, too. Like, it's so intricate sometimes. Like, it looks like there's ribbing, literal rib ribbing in certain areas of that ship yeah. where you can see, like, you know, the rib cage. And then you can see all the complex inner workings behind it. It feels very Giger to me. Mm -hmm. But um, seeing Ash and thinking, oh, my God, they didn't go like the, the wires root those cords inside of him yeah. it wasn't like short circuiting and like sh 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 yeah yeah no it looked more like milk or like it's organic like a matter. nasty yeah, well, yeah some sort of and dairy substance yeah and milk is the only liquid liquid substance that mothers create that is again to nurture and to oh <laughs> to mother's eat. milk mother's milk and it's literally coming from this force that was under the guise of like i'm one of you you can count on me and then you see the unreliability when it comes apart and I, that's why i loved it wasn't like the the severity of metal and wires is uh the problem it was i felt like it was ridley scott telling us on some level that we're the problem because ultimately Ash isn't the heavy of the movie, and neither is the xenomorph. The heavy is really this corporation on the outside of it all who sent them to their death. That's the villain. And that's humans. Mm -hmm. That's just human organisms. So I felt like all of these um, these feats to try and like expose us as um, layers of like an epidermal layer and then like muscle tissue and all of that... Um, because even like the little orbs inside of Ash felt very nasty. They're just oddly, like these like pustule. oddly organic. Yeah. Exactly. There's some. Yeah, they all just felt like incredibly gross. And robots should not necessarily feel gross. There's no uh, motor oil yeah. running this thing. It's well, it gives it more of just like a, like this like synthetic human element to right. it. Uh, yeah, and that's and that's probably life. and that's why. <laughs> They were so fooled into thinking like these were this was a real person because it's like you know yeah. he was he was sleeping in the thing the same as they were, um, yeah. and he didn't need to be because we've seen like the the newer movies where Fassbender's clearly like you know I mean he's an out and proud robot so he doesn't need to hide mm. it from them but he's he's not sleeping <laughs> in the in the the cryo beds with with the other ones but uh, no. it, it made yeah. me like. That the the robot innards might be the the most disgusting thing to me in this yeah. movie. Like I I love it, but I hate it equally at the same time. And it made me actually yeah, think of um, Halloween three uh, oh, because yeah. they're like they're almost the same way, but they're like orange Ugh. juice or it's like the thick yes. like frozen like, orange juice the frozon like, yeah. orange, but not like completely frozen. Like it's at least like no 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 come, like melted, like melted yeah, a little concentrate. bit. Yeah. yeah. Uh, just coming out of the, like, the, just that pure, like, yellowish <laughs> orange. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah. It, it's, it's gross. But I love yeah, it. 100%. Yeah, 100%. And there was another uh, Carpenter <laughs> parallel I noticed, too, that I don't feel like this movie cribbed off. I mean, I can definitely see Ridley Scott cribbing off of Stanley <laughs> Kubrick because of how many years, you know, uh, Alien was released from, you know, uh, 2001. But just the year before Halloween and the way... It was almost done in reverse because John Carpenter brought us into these environments, made them iconic, and then showed them to us in a sequence at the end of the movie mm -hmm. to the point where each environment you see, you're like, that's where that happened. I remember that shot. That's where that happened. And I remember what's missing from that shot. Brilliant. I love that Ridley Scott went in the other direction 
and established the hell out of the Nostromo. Literally, I mean, the insides of it and everything like that. Like, of course, the outsides mm-hmm. as well. But literally, like, that was the first kind of, like, uh, piece of uh, breadcrumbs being yeah. left for us, I feel, that I was eating up where I'm just kind of... Because now that I've seen the movie, I know what all these environments are. Almost, but it's something to watch them abandoned and then yeah. see them inhabited by the characters when you get through the movie. Almost you know? more like, you know, Halloween 2 with the hospital. Oh. Oh, I thought about that too, yeah. actually, the darkness. Mm-hmm. Well, that, that's another thing is like the, one of these days I'll watch it and track the relevance of like when we're in the light and when we're in the shadow, because it really is like two completely, it's a binary world where it's like either completely neutral and well lit and smooth and looks, you know, com- almost comfortable, you know, streamlined. And, oh, that's where, maybe that's where, you know, the people who are, calling the shots, you know, get to sit. And then there's the undercarriage, you know, like the, 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 the dark recesses, the, you know, the place with the, with the wet chains. And with I was the, getting Hellraiser. The, yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Very much. Yeah. Or Hellraiser is getting this since this came first. That was, I, I thought about yeah. so many other things. I just mean, I was, I was personally movie. like watching it again and just oh, being yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Hellraiser. I'm just waiting for Penhead to, <laughs> where's the Penhead versus alien uh, team up. Oh my god, that would be amazing. Because yeah. how do you torture a xenom? I guess you can. They have been tortured. Like if yeah. you set them on fire and stuff. But if you like put some hooks into yeah. it, it's just gonna like. But on the other make hand, it burn holes in the bottom of your floor. <laughs> on the other hand, how would you pleasure a xenomorph? That's true. Yeah. Oh my god, do you think he'd be able to do it? I think they could. I, I think they could get off. <laughs> I mean, they do breed. They do breed. Oh my god! See now, that, okay, HR Giger. Maybe that's all they needed. Like, they were just—they just had a lot of like <laughs> repressed sexual tension, and he's just like, I because I mean, there's we didn't talk about the whole uh, like <laughs> alleged like the 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 rape at the end, as it were, with the mm-hmm. with the tail coming up. Right, right, mm-hmm. right. Or even I mean, a, a lot of people perceive like any. Of the abductions or any of that like i mean it, it is a violation of your person because something enters you mm-hmm. um it certainly happened to kane it looked like it was about it looks like it did happen to dallas in that you know extended scene yeah and it looks like that's what they want to keep us around for is to is to breed us i felt like because that was the thing, only thing that kind of threw me i was looking at parker because we see parker's dead bloody body laying there and and we see the, just the hand of lambert in the foreground and that's how we find out with Ripley that they've been killed. And I was like, I wonder if the only reason the Xenomorph killed them is because they posed like an immediate threat. They were unrelenting and they were forthcoming, you know, just fighting against it, fighting against it. And it was like, you know what? Fuck you. You're dying. I'm not, you're not even worth laying my eggs in. But <laughs> I wonder. I don't know. <laughs> um, but the, 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 the sexual subtext is there, has been there, has, has, has always been talked about. And I'm always... I, I I feel like maybe H.R. Giger's designs were was where it first really kind of like came into the forefront of everybody's mind. Aside from the invasion of a body, the violation of of the sanctity of your your own body, and it being used for something else um, by someone who does not care. Um, I feel like there's some the 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 fa- the phallic <laughs> mm. craniums of the xenomorphs, and yeah. and even. I, Something that I don't know the 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 intimacy of their attacks because I think about like when Dallas is climbing down that ladder, they're like it's almost there, Dallas. You need to get out of there, and he's like looking around like I, I'm gonna get out of here. It's like well then do it, but look in the direction you're going. Um, <laughs> and then all of a sudden he shines the light in one direction, and it's like surprise. <laughs> the the aliens very animated and just like it's just like yeah. the the just the hand gestures and so there was one where it's, it almost seemed like karate it's just like moving and like getting into position and the uh the when when it revealed itself yeah it's like it's like that uh buffy the vampire slayer when angel was like doing the yes when they're doing your tai chi together what a what a random reference there but um and even even the (laughs) um so many the the uh the end where where he's on the escape pod and like just like the hand that comes out and it's just like it's just like judo chop 
Oh, no way. <laughs> <laughs> I always think that the xenomorph is having a nightmare. Like, it's it's just as terrified as they are. We yeah. just, the fear just doesn't ever register on its countenance. Yeah. So it's just laying there going, ah, uh, attacking me with a flamethrower. Oh, mm. oh, thank God. Okay. Did I hear something? No. Okay, I'm just going to go back to sleep. But I think I remember the first time I saw the xenomorph kind of unfold from that hiding place. Uh, the first time I watched the movie all the way through. Something about the humanity of its movements, really. I mean, it didn't read to me, and it still doesn't really, but it didn't. Re- it definitely didn't read to me at like what twelve, thirteen, mm-hmm. as like a guy in a suit. You know, it wasn't like a nineteen fifties like I am the monster of the movie kind of thing. There was also like a kind of almost balletic, you know, swiftness. Like again, like that that tai chi thing. Of it just of it just kind of like you know drifting in and out of shots or finding its light and you know <laughs> and even it's surprise moment I always because you could you could just scream surprise yeah. if you wanted to I'm ready for know. my close up Mr <laughs> Scott <laughs> <laughs> it is very much a star mm-hmm. but I I also I, I I love finding out later on in the franchise that like. Um, I don't think it takes very long. I think by the third movie, certainly in the director's cut in the third movie, we find out that it it takes on kind of very much the thing also. It it kind of takes on the physical attributes of whatever its host might have been, which is why sometimes they're on all fours. Sometimes they don't have tails. Well, it's definitely, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, the alien is smart. Yes. And and it, it knows what it's doing. It, it, there's intention behind everything. It's not like it's just like this senseless killing machine. Yeah. The second Ripley got out of there, mm-hmm. like when they almost came face to face at that fork, uh, it knew that she was going for the escape shuttle. It yeah. knew, oh, you know what? She's going to blow this place up. I better, I better skedaddle. I better. <laughs> I mean, maybe it knows. Maybe it you know understands it English. It, it knows what mother is saying on like the countdown. Who knows? Yeah. I mean, that's the other thing is that like uh, I think Ash is the one who points out how ad- readily adaptable they are. Like it didn't seem to have pr- a problem breathing. I don't even know if it does breathe, but it didn't seem to ha- have a problem breathing once it was out in the outer space atmosphere. Mm-hmm. Once she sent it out the airlock, it you know it didn't need an astronaut suit, and it went right back and tried to crawl back into the ship. So maybe it's really just got that i don't know that grit that <laughs> that <laughs> instinctual <laughs> environmental like uh 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 what's the word i'm looking for like alpha <laughs> yeah. kind of geneticism built into it. genetics are on its side certainly because i mean that, that that was that was what brought about the whole alien versus predator discussion in the first place is like you know which is really kind of like the alpha predatory you know uh alien creature like which would win and I still put would put my money on a xenomorph though. Xenomorph still seeing them on screen, it unsettles me. It makes me. I think it's the 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 mystery behind what they know because we know they're smart, but we don't know how smart. We know they can anticipate things and plan, but we don't know how well. You know, we know <laughs> that there are drones and there are queens now. It's been a minute what since else? I've seen. I mean, well, besides the alien movies, the Predator movies. As well, yeah. I I did see more recently the um, oh, was it the the one with Keegan Michael Key? It oh, was the, it was is that the Predator the, or Predators? I can't. Remember predators is the one with Topher Grace. Okay. Uh, or Adrian so Adrian Brody uh, and and Topher Grace is in it. Uh, okay. So yeah, it goes Predator with Arnold Schwarzenegger, uh, Predator Two yeah. with uh, yeah. Glover. Pre- yeah. uh, Predators, which mm-hmm. is the Adrian Brody one, and then is it the Predator from 2018? And right? then yeah, which was right which now. was not good because like because Prey came out, um, and that's this was, the one this, with Keegan Michael Key. No, is the Predator. Yeah, the Predator. Yeah, and uh, yeah. and then Prey. So I think I watched Prey, and then I watched the Predator. Um, but yeah, that's not a franchise. Like that's a very inconsistent franchise. Um, yeah, but I wonder the, if they claim the Alien v Predator movies is. <laughs> and the, yeah, um, those are just canon. weird. Like those are well, well, Lance Henriksen is in the the first Alien versus Predator, um, so. playing like the human version of the the Bishop character, 
Um, right, but right, I don't, right, right. I don't remember. Right. I just remember them being really bad. And I, and I always just assumed that it was like, it was born like kind of the same way that Freddy versus Jason was, where just like, here's, uh, which is the better franchise? Not necessarily who would, <laughs> who would kick who's ass. That's like, it's like the ultimate, like Twitter post where you see, it's just like, who would win in a fight? And it's just like, oh, yeah. that's what like Hollywood execs did back in the eighties. Mm-hmm. Like who would win in a fight? Let's make a movie out of it. And let's get a like a Taco Bell correlation where we can like create a cup that corresponds <laughs> with the movie, or the you know, or the popcorn this, bucket with the uh, or the popcorn bucket, know. yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, now the popcorn bucket, one hundred percent. But um, <laughs> but um, yeah, no, those movies I have, I think, the least exposure to, especially Requiem. I I don't get it when I watch that movie. I've tried. Mm-hmm. I think I've seen it twice, and I would watch it again. That's more than I've seen I, I'd watch. I'd walk in with a with a, like a I don't whatever this is a grimace a, 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 a what is this <laughs> a, I don't, are, yeah I don't know I think it's a it's, lip curl maybe a a lip curl I, I think you're you're having whatever. a like a, a a stroke or something I, I I'd have a stroke <laughs> you're, if you're I had to watch it Van der Rauch Requiem Alien versus Predator Requiem again I I would just yeah just have a stroke yeah. <laughs> That's but no weird. ultimately. Like, I walk away from this feeling, like, in- incredibly satisfied. And I even, it's impossible to separate it in my head from Aliens. Like, I love the fact that, spoiler for Aliens, folks. I, I won't give a major spoiler. I'll just say, she sleeps peacefully at the end of this movie. We get to see some people sleeping peacefully at the end of Aliens. And I'm just, it's just kind of a wonderful little, mm-hmm. oh, let it always end like that. Like, Dorothy always goes back home to Kansas or something like that. You know, like, mm-hmm. another adventure in Oz, but it's time to go home. I don't, I, I, I don't remember. Did they mention Ripley having a daughter in this movie? No. And they don't in the, th- in... The theatrical. They mention it. They mention it in the theatrical, they mention it, I think, yeah. in the theatrical cut. But we really get some more time with it. Uh, we get to see her find out. Yeah about her daughter in the extended or because yeah it's not a director's cut for aliens yeah it is an extended yeah an alternate cut yeah yeah because i mean that's pretty fucked up that you're like you're clearly there's a risk to this profession that she has that you're 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 going out there you're you don't know how long you're going to be gone like there's you know x number of months or years however long a space mission lasts by the way what year is this supposed to take place in 2037. God, just, when we just, just wait, a few like years from we now. Are, we've had the Back to the Future memes uh, since we've we've already passed that. Just wait until we're we're, we're beyond Alien. But um, did I tell you that when Back to the Future Day happened in 2015, uh, my sister and I timed it perfectly to watch the first movie and then start the second movie, so that when they checked the time when they find out the coordinates, when they, you know, are in 2015 and Doc mm-hmm. says, this is the time and this is the date. It was that time and it was that yeah. date. We timed it perfectly and that's the way we celebrated. If I'm still around in 2037, I'll look for some kind of signature yeah. <laughs> that I can achieve. Oh. <laughs> it's kind of one day off from my of... birthday. Um, oh, really? Yeah. Aww. Oh, well. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like there's, there's, you know, you're going on these these missions. Like you're you're essentially frozen in time. So there's yeah. you know, know that there's a risk that you could come back and your daughter could be older than you. So there's almost like this. Um, and I know this is like going into the next movie, but it's still kind of interesting to think about it in response to kind of like the character in this movie is that yeah. there's there's almost like this loss of like you you lose out on on the life that you would have with your child and all that time and and also like the the loss that they have that their mother is not around and then to get yeah. like come back and find out oh yeah your daughter died years ago of old age well, like she just never well, maybe, knew you <laughs> well maybe i mean maybe she has it in her insurance policy that like you know if it looks like they can't find her freeze my daughter so <laughs> so when you find me i'll come back and we can thaw her out and then we'll have a lovely life but yeah. also i'm wondering if that's what made her because we don't know, like, necessarily, like, the infrastructure outside of the corporation, even as we move through these movies. Like, we find out the world, you know, the universe is kind of, like, just corrupt by and large, which isn't hard to wrap our heads around. Yeah. But 
Um, as far as like jobs are concerned, this was this might have been, uh, in theory, like the safest thing that paid the best that Ripley could have done. Maybe it paid a lot because it was intergalactic travel, but it wasn't because it wasn't like high risk in any other by any other means mm -hmm. um, because she was just towing shit. Maybe it's like, okay, I'm going to be away for a long time. Gonna, I'm going to make bank and I'll be able to like be around for like you, the whole school year next year. And then if I need another, you know, tour, I can, I can pick up another shift yeah. and I'll be gone for like three years and then I'll, but then I'll be back in time, you know, to just see you graduate. First world <laughs> problems in the future, you know? <laughs> but that ultimately like, you know, this seemed like a low risk. Yeah. Uh, give, you know, because they weren't supposed to be interacting with other alien life forms and mm -hmm. whatnot, you know? They're all just, you know, doing their job. And I, again, like the eternal questioning. There was that one point where they're all watching um, when Kane has that face hugger. And, and I think it's um, Parker, Parker who cries out, why aren't they freezing him? Why aren't they freezing it? Like, you know, just so like if there is some kind of danger, like we're not, we have a scientist, but we're not all scientists. Like, what if we just freeze this fucker so we don't put ourselves at any kind of risk? Yeah. We've already crossed the quarantine threshold. What if we just freeze him and then put him in the hands of the corporation and leave it? They literally could have done that. Yeah. You know? Parker but, was just making the yeah, most ash. sense. Yeah. Of, of yeah. I mean, yeah. everybody has a moment where they're making sense in mm -hmm. this movie, except for Ash. God, that fuck. Well, he makes he makes sense for what he's <laughs> doing, but uh, I mean, he it's it's not really his fault. He was engineered, yeah, to do this. Any, so. Yeah. Anyway, I think that that about covers it for this. So why don't we yeah. mosey along over to the cherry picker? It's not like we killed him on purpose. On purpose. All right, uh, this is pretty straightforward, but cherry on top, you know, do you want Lambert, to be, do you want to be the one to officially say it? <laughs> Lambert! Lambert! <laughs> Lambert. <laughs> no, it's going to be Ripley, of course it yeah. is. She's, she's the boss. She is she's the boss. The one who, she, she, I mean, when somebody's a clear leader, mm -hmm. when they're third in command, like, that's a leader. Absolutely. Yeah. And what's great is now that we've covered Alien that yeah. Ripley is now eligible to play on Final Girl Survivor when we when oh we get to the, the next oh season God, if of anybody, that. If anybody kicks her off, I swear to fucking God, I'm going <laughs> to I'm going to be so angry. I get so surprised by <laughs> the results yeah. of our survivors. I know and I oh, I I'm going to be more really more reason to check out our uh, the Cherry Picker After Darks. Yeah. Sometimes we do we do Final Girl Survivor or Scream yeah. Survivor. Uh, God. And it never goes the way you think it will. No, it never does. No. Okay, so so Cherry Picker last time we asked you who deserves to die the most in Raising Kane. I nominated mm -hmm. Sergeant Sean Kelly. You nominated Dr. Nix Sr. Mm -hmm. uh, Cross, Patreon, Instagram, and YouTube. Not a lot of voters here, but, you know, that was to be expected. Nobody's seen Raising Kane, and you should see it. The, di yes, the director's should. cut, though. Check it out. Director's if you, if you cut. haven't already, yeah. see it. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah, across Patreon, Instagram, YouTube, 61 for Sergeant Callie and 193 for Dr. Nick Sr. Believe it oh or not. Oh, my God. <clears throat> so what did they say? Braxton Wages says Sergeant Callie was such a dick to Mac, the retired detective. He wouldn't take him seriously, told him to go home and get a hobby, even though he was doing their job for them. Silent Saturn says, Dr. Nick Sr. probably deserves it more, but I don't like mm. voting for the heavy when they're fun. So Sergeant Callie gets the chop. To be fair, he was needlessly being an a-hole. Uh, thank you for covering this film. I had completely forgotten about Tasty Stephen Bauer, one of my early mm. crushes. Right, 100%. Amethyst Frost says, I'm glad you guys did this episode. I watched the movie in prep for the podcast and came away pretty lukewarm about it, even based on the director's cut. But the discussion made me appreciate the movie and its ridiculous performances and characters a lot more. Even though his death oh. scene was extremely camp, he was still the villain and his psychological abuse of his son was next level. So kill Dr. Nix Sr. 
Thank you, Amethyst. That's awesome. <laughs> vocal that it? vote. That's it. Vocal uh, minority. <laughs> Two against one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So you get um, uh, you get first dibs. Okay. I know we just I literally just said I'm breathing the same breath I said it with, but mm. uh, that Ash was engineered for this. That doesn't have anything to do with um, whether he deserves it or not, because I think um, he needs to die the most. Because it, had he died earlier, less problems quicker path towards a solution he was the impediment to progress that that manifested physically on screen because we have to have that uh, uh as per the rules mm -hmm. so i think ash um also you know what he seemed to have some built-in misogyny <laughs> the, just the he's just programmed to be an asshole yeah he is like he's he, he's an ash hole i bet his last name was hole and he <laughs> talking to rip porter the hole he did the and my cousin disrespect. ash Exactly. Porter Hole's cousin, Ash. And there was a cane in our last regular episode, and there's a cane in this one. So see, it's all interconnected with yeah. the Cherry Picker After Dark and our usual episodes. And but anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. You, He's you, a piece of you, shit. You, you, he is. And you said cane. Needs to be you said cane, and that's my choice because... Oh. Uh, f for the fact that he's just that character in, in these movies that is just needlessly reckless... Just makes the stupidest decisions, and I mean, they could have they could have gone out, they could have explored that signal and just been like, "Yeah, there's this thing here. It doesn't look kosher. We're not getting close to it." Hey, Ash, if you really want to get this that badly, have at her. You know, like they were gonna go, they would have reported back what what they found, but he had to put his fucking face right up to that thing, especially even after it opened, even after it did the whomp, and as you, as you said, and like, yes. what was he expecting? And then because of that, the, the two others had to drag his ass back to the spaceship mm -hmm. and then, and, and then protocol had to be broken. I mean, like there's a lot that was kind of the seeds were planted by Ash, but it was this guy's stupidity that uh, pushed it over the edge. So Unfortunately, it's going to be Kane for me. But it's John Hurt, and he's adorable. <laughs> <laughs> this is the youngest I've ever seen him in anything, I think. and Because he, he was an older character actor who worked often yeah. uh, after this. And I, th I still think, I don't think I've seen him be younger than this in anything. He was also a stage actor, too. You can tell yeah. a little bit from the, you know, the, the, the theater. Yeah. The theater, yeah. Well, they all, yeah, I mean, it, it, they all started in this. Yeah, I, I guess so. Most I mean, them. yeah. Well, I'm Veronica totally Cartwright scary. was in. Uh, Veronica Cartwright was, was in The Birds. She yeah. was a child actor and did yeah. worked and worked and still does. But um, and uh, Yaffa uh, Yaffa Koto. Stanton. Yaffa Koto, like he he had been around. He was the villain in Live and Let Die, the James Bond movie. Oh, yeah. so you still haven't seen that one. Mm. I'm gonna watch that now. I like that he's one. Good. Yeah. You do? Who was the Bond in that Bond? That was uh, Roger Moore's first uh, outing. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. Who's your favorite Bond? Oh, good question. I oh don't my God. know. This is like a really... No, no one's asked you before. Well, no, it's just because it always... <laughs> it's, it shifts. It's just like... It, oh, You really? know what? Okay, I'm going to be very controversial, and I'm going to say that it's <gasps> Pierce Brosnan because... because really? Pierce Brosnan was like the one who was there, like when I grew up, like I was alive right. when, when Timothy Dalton took over the, like when he right. first came on, but like I was too young to see that. But like, you know, when mm. Goldeneye and all that like came out, like that was my first exposure to it. And I think mm. that he's actually like encompassed like a really good combination of all of the, the traits of the previous actors um okay. daniel craig like is also like i really love daniel craig as the character i hate the movies yeah. that he's in i hated the new bond movies with the exception of like casino royale and skyfall like most of them i just could not stand um so he was he was like a a, a great james bond in just what i thought were were terrible movies and then like i mean sean connery it's you know really really love him uh i i love the camp of Roger Moore. 
Um, right. And even like even Timothy Dalton has qualities that I'm just like, oh, he should have stuck around a little bit longer because he was kind of doing the Daniel Craig thing before Daniel Craig mm. did it. And it was just almost like too soon for its time. And then and then there's George Lazenby, who I mean, he he wasn't right for it and he knew it himself. So, okay. you know, okay. <laughs> a little awesome. I love the detour, a little maybe maybe we'll start a James Bond podcast. You never know. <laughs> James Bond cast. We'll call it that. Yeah, because <laughs> I've only seen the first three movies. I have not seen anything subsequent. The wow. only Bond I've seen from opening credits to end credits is Sean Connery, and I gotta tell you, because isn't is Doctor No the first one? Which one? That was the first, the first one? one. Yeah. Yeah, that one was boring. And then what was after that? <laughs> from Russia with Love. From Russia with with Love, I was like, okay, this is kind of interesting. Yeah. And which one was Pussy Galore in? Was it Goldfinger? That's, gold, or that that's Goldfinger. Yeah. Okay, that's Goldfinger, and I saw Pussy Galore, and I was just kind of like, okay, we got a movie now. But then she fell in love with him, and I was like, I like it better. Well, when she, she's like, fuck you. Yeah, well, <laughs> when, or like in the book that, where she's actually a lesbian with her like flying oh, circus of, of would, lesbian uh, oh, pilots. Yeah. Why didn't we have that? <laughs> we still need that. I, I'm sure that hasn't happened in Bond yet. So where are our flying lesbians? I don't That's know. Bring, hashtag bring back the flying there's lesbians. There's definitely been lesbian <laughs> characters in in the Bond. I mean, the, in From Did Russia with fly? Love. The, I mean, fly? maybe. I don't, I'd have to go back and watch. <laughs> I... Every every couple of years, like I like to, I, I get a little nostalgic. I'm like, okay, I need to throw on these movies. Sure, sure, okay. Um, so, I know, so I know, so. I know. People scratch that itch, and I, I have yet to even develop it. So. Well, what, like, what I don't know days? what's going on. Like, where's when are they going to announce the new actor who's who's stepping in? So. I know. But anyway, Yaf Yafit yeah. Koto, uh, he, he was he was the villain in Live and Let Die. He was also in <laughs> Freddy's Dead. Is it? Is, wasn't he in that one? I can't remember. What did he play in it? I don't know because I'm I'm going through them. I'm watching them, uh, and that's the next oh, one I have oh, to oh, watch. Oh. But he's the I uh, can't like he's he's he survives. I think he's he's there at the end. He's like okay. he, isn't he like because aren't they like in a like a group home or something? He might have been like the the guy who. Oh, works there. that's right. Yeah, he yeah. does survive. I forgot. He's okay. We'll talk about it when we cross that bridge, but let me just say, mm -hmm. horribly underutilized in that movie. Yeah. There was so much promise, and they didn't put their focus where they needed to. That's my yeah. entry point. Yeah. Which, I, I mean, I think that if, 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 if it wasn't Sigourney Weaver as our cherry on top or, or Ellen Ripley uh -huh. here, I would probably go for Parker Yafit Koto. Oh, 100%. Yeah, oh, I yeah love he, was my, he, was, he was my next faves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like even when he even when he's like raging and stuff like that, I'm just kind of like, all you got to do is call down, calm down, my man. Yeah. You just got to calm down. You've you've got this. We've got this. We just we need to figure it out. We need to remember we're on the same team. And and when she finally strong arms him into not yelling long enough to listen, I'm like, okay. And then yeah. you just got to go off and blow off some steam. Cool. Go do it. Anyway, uh, to wrap things <laughs> up, those those are our nominees. You can vote for. Yeah. Kane, or you can vote for Ashhole, and uh, yeah. those uh, polls are going to be open on Patreon. You can head over there uh, if you want to vote extra. You don't have to be uh, subscribed to Patreon. I usually make those open to the public, but if you do want to subscribe, it would be much mm -hmm. appreciated. It goes a long way in helping the podcast out. Uh, you can go yeah. over to Instagram, follow us at the Cherry Picker Pod, and you can also vote on YouTube here in the community section. So subscribe to us here. If you are new to the Cherry Picker and you're watching us on YouTube, you can listen to us. The RSS feed link is in the descriptions down below. It might be more efficient uh, yeah. to take in your podcast that way. Or if you are listening to us and you want to see edward's pristine video now that oh. he got that all sorted <laughs> out you can oh. uh, go follow us on the youtube so where can they find you on social media you can find my sparkling personality at edward is truth traditional spelling one word no spaces at instagram letterboxd uh youtube and tiktok why not mm -hmm. how about you zach uh main youtube channel zach cherry zed or Z-A-C-K-C-H-E-R-R-Y. 
Uh, I'm on the uh, the letterbox, Zach Cherry, Twitter, Zach Cherry eight, and uh, Instagram, Retro Bitch Face. Sorry, I'm trying to remember everything. And go follow the the, the short film that I'm making with uh, my yeah. friend Eric Champney. Uh, we're gonna have the crowdfunding campaign start very soon. Uh, so you can follow that on social media, Macabre the movie. So that's Macabre the movie, however you want to say. Macabre. M-A-C-A-B-R-E-T-H-E-M-O-V-I-E. That's on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook as well. There's a page if you want to go to www.macabreshortfilm.com. You can sign up for the mailing list. Uh, all that fun stuff. And uh, yeah, hopefully we'll have more news on that coming up soon because I want to keep everyone apprised of, of, of the goings on, going, going ons of that. Uh-huh. Going What's on. goings on? <laughs> going, goings on. Yeah. What's happening next week? What are we, what are we talking about? That's a really about? good question, Zach. What is happening? Should I just say a title and then you'll be forced to do it? Yes. <laughs> yes? No, really? you know what we're doing. We're What are we doing next week? We are doing Maxine. Oh, that's right. I forgot. I didn't write it yeah. down. New release Maxine. movie. Maxine. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to sing it like or, Roxanne. Or you can say, or if you want to do like the th- 13 Ghost or 7, you can do the Ma Triple X Ian. Max Scene. Yeah. Ma I like triple, doing it. I, I like tr- doing it phonetically. Max six 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 scene. Matriple X scene. Like like no, three games. I don't game. like Matriple X because it's not triple. It didn't write out triple. I know it's but three of them. Yeah, but, but there's Max three six six scene. Yeah, you, you so you pronounce them. Max six 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 scene. No, you say triple X. <laughs> no. Let us know in the comments. What do you? I, <laughs> <laughs> Which do you prefer? <laughs> I mean, everyone just calls it Maxine, but whatever. <laughs> yeah. I'm but just uh, Maxine. Thank you, you don't for. Don't have to put on that red light. Maxine. Max six six sixteen. Yes. Go on. Right. Yeah. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. And we will be right back. <laughs>